hey hey insight number five we're just going to cover one section section 134 um so we just had section 133, obviously, which is the appendix to the Book of Commandments. And if you put it in context, like chronologically, it really doesn't fit where it is. And neither does this one, because this is um, August 17, 1835. So this is like about four years after the last one, but still good 10 years before we left off last week. Um so they don't run in order, even though they're numbered sequentially like that. They don't actually run chronologically in order. Um, so this is like sort of the first time, this is in Kirtland, Ohio, where they were starting to get like mob persecution and some real hatred going on. I mean, there'd always been hatred and, and angst and against Joseph Smith and Emma and their families, but this was like a, a bigger issue now was forming. Um, and they wanted to sort of, like the saints wanted to go out and defend themselves. And, they, and of course, wouldn't you, right? Like, I would. I'd be like, bring it on, mate. I've got a big stick. Come closer, you know. Um, because they're, you're infringing on our rights to practice religion in this land of freedom that we're in. You're telling us that we can't do that, and yet the law says that we can. And yet you're not getting arrested for it. Oh, my gosh, does that plead to my sense of injustice. And I would be at the front of the queue with a massive stick ready to beat on them. But <laughs> this section talks us through more around... Um, you know, basically the Lord is coming, yes, but in the meantime, let's learn some respect, some uh, peace, some harmony, and, and how to exist on common ground, even though we don't agree with each other, even like find commonalities between us, because that's where we've, it's, I think Sister Eubank was talking about, find commonalities between us, rather than differences, because that's what brings peace, it doesn't mean you have to agree on everything, but find those commonalities, um, so there's some, in this it, it, it talks around some of our core beliefs on government, human rights and in keeping all of it with gospel teachings and how we sort of value and, and work in that. How do we exist in a world where our governments often don't come into line with our gospel teachings? It explains in here why we have governments, that the governments were given to us rather than um, kings or queens. Who hold all the power governments were given as a democracy and that is a better way to run the land or run the place you live and that that sort of instruction and the way of doing that was given from the lord are these people in government always righteous <laughs> no usually not um i think for our government here in new zealand i think a lot of them are very well meaning i don't think there's a lot of corruption i don't see it anyway um there's some, there's some backhand deals, but I don't really actually think anybody in our government is that clever enough to get away with that kind of thing. Does it happen in America and Russia and China? You betcha it does. Those are bigger countries. They've got places to hide. They're clever at their spying. We're a little more transparent down here. Um, I don't doubt for a second, though, that there aren't, you know, some dodgy dealings going on. Of course there is. Politicians get caught in this all the time. It happens. Um, but... We get to vote, um, and that's important. So when the voting comes around, make sure you vote, because you get a voice. And oft times in the past, you haven't. Uh, it's only been certain people that can vote, and in the democratic societies that we exist in today, you get to vote. Um, so it's pretty cool that you make sure you do that. Now, some of you are going to live in countries where you don't get to do that, where the laws are stricter, where you can't gather in large numbers and talk about the gospel, where you can't be seen talking to your co-workers about church stuff. There's rules in government that are put there that don't align with our gospel teachings. So how do you find your place in all of this? Um, how do you keep church and government separate while being accountable to both? It is a big question. It's probably a lifelong thing that you're going to struggle with. Some of you will find it very easy because your values will align with the current government and they're the values that you keep at church. Tick, done. And then other times, they're going to be really out of whack. Um, and how, how do you fit in all of that? So your value system will find that these can often clash. We can, though, respect government and the law of the land at the same time advocate for our personal freedoms. So if there's something, like right now New Zealand's got an end-of-life bill that I, I don't personally agree with, I can see why people want it, but actually, you know, we're here to learn and grow, and if you're going to end your life earlier, then you're not going to get the growth from that trial that you've been given. And while people look at it differently than me, I need to find commonalities with those people. 
rather than just disagreeing with them on this maybe one point. Um, but that is now law in New Zealand that that's going to happen. It's a bit frightening. Um, but for a lot of people, they see that as having more freedom, and I see that as being rife with just all sorts of ugh, and problems. Um, and it certainly doesn't sit with my gospel values. So, how do you keep both, right? How do you respect that government? And I, you know, vote for the government. They're the government that put it in. And I support that with them because they do a lot of good in other areas. So there's a way to, to balance that and it's finding commonality between the people that you're dealing with. There's big issues around like COVID vaccines and should you or shouldn't you and where you fall on that line and what that means for you. So there's a lot of issues around that come up and there's going to be more. So where do you do this? Um, we can advocate for our personal freedoms and we can advocate for our law changes, but we need to do that lawfully. And sometimes we can feel very oppressed. Um, but you need to keep doing it. And you've got to remember, these saints did too. They felt very oppressed. The government was not listening to them. They dismissed them and said, oh, well, tough luck, you guys. Uh, it's like, uh, yeah, but you're sorting out stuff for other people. Why not us? It was very rough, very uneven, and as Elder Renlund describes, infuriatingly unfair. So, um, if you want a good base to check where you are at keeping, like keeping your personal values, yet respecting others, go look at Articles of Faith number 11 and number 12. They really cover the subject very well, words better than I could give you, um, definitely, because they come from Joseph Smith, a prophet, going to be better than my words. Um, but they really help you to sort of sort of self-evaluate how you're doing with that and, and could you be less contentious, more accepting, and yet still continue to advocate for your beliefs in a way that does not cause contention or break the law. Um, so yeah, if you're finding yourself caught between honouring your covenants and keeping the law of the land, remember the Lord will provide a way, but you do need to ask. Um, he'll provide a way too, even if you don't ask. But if you ask, you're going to find a lot quicker and he's going to help you with it, right? Um, out of res band now, this is from a BYU devotional, so it's not a conference talk, was on September 15, 2015. Uh, out of res band, he said, Remember how the Saviour handled tough questions. He remained calm, he showed respect, and he taught truth. But he never forced anyone to live the way he taught. And that's just how it's got to be. You cannot force someone to live your values. You need to remain calm, show respect, teach truth, but don't force it on anybody. They're going to do what they're going to do. It's part of agency. That's part of them having that option to choose just like you do. And you need to respect that, even if it's really infuriating. Um, doesn't mean you have to be their best friend, right? But you can still respect that and you can still be um, amicable. You can be friendly. All right, so there's some really interesting thoughts there on government and everything, and we clank over time again, so sorry. But thank you for joining me this week. I, yeah, really happy to have you join me next week. It is it is a bit of a sad but also a glorious time um, in church history, and I'm sad we only get a week to cover it. I could cover a whole year on it. I would love to learn way more about it, but we will undoubtedly have some great conversations next week and I will see you there. Have a great weekend. Love you guys. Mwah.